Welcome to the Connected Podcast by FL Fuller Landau Montreal. My name is Euro Smilikic and I'm joined today by a partner of mine, Josh Miller at FL Fuller Landau Montreal. And today we're going to be discussing the topic of incorporating your business or not. And before we dive into that, perhaps Josh, you can give us a brief introduction about yourself. Um, hi, Josh Miller. As you said, we've been uh, partners and know each other for a little while. I've been partner here at Fuller for close to 20 years and deal more with uh, small business enterprises, SMEs, entrepreneurs. That's really day to day what uh, what I do. Kind of a fixing, problem solving, uh, and definitely with startups too. So startups and the question that we're talking about incorporating or not, not necessarily from a legal aspect, more from an accounting and business side aspect. And uh, that's that's a fun part. Absolutely. So we see this a lot with uh, clients, new, new clients, clients that have been around for a while, but they haven't really been at that accounting tax point of incorporating. So maybe you can kind of, let's go right into the math of it all from an accounting tax point of view of why, whether you should incorporate your unincorporated business or not. So from a tax standpoint, I mean, just so that people understand the basics behind it, corporate rates are, at least in Quebec, from 18% to 27%, depending if you're if your taxable profits is above or below 500,000, obviously below 500,000 is lower rated 18%. Uh, on a personal side, the max rate is 53%. Uh, and uh, we're not necessarily the most expensive province. Ontario is still up there at uh, 53% at the top rate. So the question of incorporating or not is partially based on what overall tax will you pay, both corporate and personal. So if we look at just from a straight tax standpoint, if you're making, say, hundred thousand dollars you might be able to save about five six thousand dollars by by paying yourself a dividend like letting the corporation pay the tax the net pay out of dividend instead of paying yourself a salary uh, there's the, when you're thinking about incorporation on the tax side it's partly a question of where am I going to pay the lowest overall tax corporation and personal got to look at it together yeah same pair of pants just different pockets so if we're looking at just a simple, simple math of it, like you mentioned earlier, evidently the, the tax rates in a corporation are much lower than they are on a personal level. The personal system uses the graduated rate system, like you said, uh, and those can reach up, like you said, to 53% uh, in Quebec and, and Ontario, some of the higher tax provinces of the country. But it all depends on what you need to, to live, right? So it's not necessarily an ultimate tax savings, it's just a deferral? The one of the questions, I guess, you know, in any example or when you're talking, when you're think, figuring out what you should be doing in your mm-hmm. or not is, are you going to spend everything you earn? So let me give you a scenario. So say I am a doctor and I'm now to the point where I'm making 300000 a year. I'm not incorporated at this point. So what are some of the things that should run, what is the thought process there? Well, doctors have a whole other history of, or question mark as to whether you can incorporate. Good point. So let's, you know, we'll, we'll leave that aside for the moment. Let's assume they can incorporate mm-hmm. for this discussion. And the, the question is, A, of that 300000 are you spending everything you earn? Mm-hmm. You know, that, so, that's the first question. If you're spending everything you earn, then whether you earn it directly or you earn it through a corporation, whether you pay yourself dividend or salary, you're kind of paying about the same amount of tax. There is a differential, there's no question, and it could be that five to $10,000 range depending on... And that's the, the differential is marginal if you're pulling everything out because of integration, you're saying. Like there's an integration concept in Canada with the dividends. So that's why the, the, the differential is grind down, right? Uh, essentially, yes. The whole Canadian tax system is based on the fact that if you earn a dollar through a company, pay the corporate tax and then pay yourself a dividend, or you earn that dollar directly into mm-hmm. your pocket, you're paying approximately the same amount of tax. Where the difference lies sometimes is a payroll levies. If you're paying yourself a salary, you're paying into the Quebec pension, you're paying into the health services fund, so sometimes these are differences that if it's a high enough view, that has to get it could be a deal breaker. Yeah. Okay. And, and I guess the other burden is the administrative burden of having a corporation. 
you have to do bookkeeping. You have to, you know, when you're earning money personally, you get you you're earning it. You have a salary. Yes, you can have a business personally, but you don't have to keep track of a balance sheet. You don't have to keep track of your assets, your bank account, the receivable, the payable. You just report your income and expenses on your tax return, and that's it. When you incorporate, you definitely have to do some serious bookkeeping. Um, and it depends, of course, on the number of transactions, how complicated it gets. But you have to keep that it's in consideration. A separate set of books. Yeah. Separate set of books, and keep uh, and, and there's a cost to it. If you're not doing it yourself, which most entrepreneurs don't typically do it themselves, or they try and they screw it up sometimes, right. and that's where we have to fix it. Uh, but it, there's there's a definite cost to doing that. That and of course there's the legal cost. There is incorporating, uh, which could be anywhere from say seven hundred to eighteen hundred or so, at least here mm -hmm. in Canada and Quebec. Uh, there's the minute book that you're supposed to keep every year, mm -hmm. which could be two fifty to five hundred, depending who you're dealing with. Right. Uh, and then of course there's accounting. There's the filing of your corporation tax returns. And then, of course, if you're paying a dividend, you've got to prepare tax slips and all that. So it, it could be several thousand dollars a year, or likely will be several thousand dollars mm -hmm. a year, to maintain that corporation. So the, the, the differential, at least from a tax standpoint, has to be worthwhile. Mm -hmm. So where does that come into play? Less so if you're spending all your money. But if you don't spend everything you earn, and you're able to keep some dollars in the company and pay at the low tax rate, and not pay that differential when you pull it out personally, well, that could be interesting over time. That can help you invest the money and let it grow at a faster rate because you have a, a greater base in there. Uh, it really depends on when you're going to pull it out. It then becomes a number crunch. You know, if I'm only going to leave it in there for a year, it's not a, it's right, not a huge right, benefit. Right. If I'm going to be able to defer for four, five, eight, ten years, well, that becomes very interesting. Absolutely, and I think it's extremely important. Like you, you touched on on everything there, you got to look at everything in a holistic manner and, and see after incorporating these costs on whether you should incorporate or not. Uh, once once you factor everything in, does it make sense to to, to go forward uh, with that? Well, there's a, there and there's another aspect, uh, really, and we're not touching the law. We're not touching the the legal side of incorporating uh, or the effects, but. The other benefit of incorporation is if you're going to have, if you are at risk of being sued or risk of having outside liabilities, your product or service, uh, you know, might screw up or something mm -hmm. might go wrong and you might have a customer sue you, you can be somewhat protected by the corporation. It can't necessarily automatically come and sue you personally. So you are kind of protecting the assets that you own personally and whereas the, that, that, litigation, a potential litigation, should only be able to touch the assets in your company. And that's because it's its own person, if you will. Correct. So then the question is, if you're going to do it that way, and you're going to save, you know, right. the, the chance of getting, you know, litigation and save your other assets, don't leave excess funds in your company. Right. Uh, you know, if you're going to defer uh, income tax by not spending and not pulling up money, well, watch out, because if you accumulate half a million dollars in there, and then you get sued, that half a million bucks is ready. So now you're talking a little bit more complicated. Yeah, and that leads scenario. to a whole other tax. It really like, does. <laughs> a bunch of tax things popping up in our heads here because we're, we're accountants. But uh, great, Josh. Thank you so much for spending the time yeah, with welcome. us today. Uh, thank you, viewers, for tuning in. And stay tuned for some more interesting episodes to come.